Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum and I call this regular meeting for the town of Pelham Committee of the Whole to order. It has been moved by Councillor Junkin that the agenda for the April 4th, 2016 Committee of the Whole meeting be adopted. Are there any changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Do any members have any pecuniary interest they need to declare? None, Mr. Mayor. There are none. Can that be so noted? Thank you. Now we move to department reports. We have a few for community planning and development. It's been moved by Councillor Kersey. The committee of the whole recommend that council receive in the issue summary report regarding the proposal for a Signum wireless communications tower to be located at 227 Highway 20 East for information. And the council concurs with the siting of the proposed communications tower to be located toward the rear of 227 Highway 20 East and that the applicant be so advised of council's support. Questions or comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, basically, a comment. Um, having been involved in other uh, public forums where wireless communicators bring forward proposals and it's more of a public meeting as opposed to an open house. And I must say that this format is much better in that we don't have jurisdiction in any case and for us to sit there and repeatedly say we don't have jurisdiction, thank you very much, we appreciate your comments, but having said that we can't do anything about it. So I think this format is much better and I think the proponent should be congratulated on the way he has made this proposal and the thoroughness of his information that is provided for council and I'd be happy to endorse the recommendation in the report. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Councillor. Any other councillors? Councillor Rubiak. Thank you. And through you, I have a question for, uh, for the director with regard to this. And the question is, is this, we, we have this one, we also saw a few months ago um, a, a notification, I guess, of, of a, a uh, tower that was going to go up on the west side of, of Pelham with regard to uh, uh, web uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, support for, for rural counties. So <coughs> what I'm really wondering is whether there's a master plan somewhere. Do we have some indication of what the intention is ultimately of how many towers and what locations that we might be able to just uh, learn of so that we as we get these things one by one, we can see how they, they fit into an overall scheme of things. Thank you. Madam Director. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, we don't have a master plan or, or anything like that. Um, there are various uh, carriers and there are various um, um, providers out there. And so some of the towers that we get, they're individual towers for a particular um, cell service uh, um, carrier and so they tend to be single um, types of, of towers and single poles and whereas this one is a uh, business that provides towers and then will allow three or four co-location of uh, various carriers on it and that's the kind of uh, operation that we prefer uh, because it does minimize the number of uh, towers that we uh, will get in our municipality. Um, in the past, um, in another life, I did uh, attempt to get, um, you know, some kind of overall mapping of uh, where cell towers may go and the different plans for cell tower locations by the various carriers, and um, that was pretty difficult to do. And as we have become more uh, digitally inclined and our bandwidth and data that we're using on our cell phones for these days and it's very little actual phone calling that mm -hmm. happens on cell phones it's re resulting in the need for more frequency of towers and so these kinds of things change uh, rather regularly um, with the carriers themselves and to the point where they have a difficult planning their future in, in terms of needs uh, for towers. Um, that being said, I could certainly reach out to the proponent and see if there are any other towers that they are aware of or know of that they'll be planning um, or think are coming down the, the pipe. Certainly Signum Wireless does a lot of towers for a variety of carriers and um, 
and so forth, but it's, it's something that's very difficult to map and get a handle on because it's ever-changing technology. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and that's, that's, that's very helpful. It, it is changing technology, and I suppose over, over time, the locations need to change too because there's development and that sort of thing. Um, putting on a different hat just for a moment, I am concerned, of course, about towers uh, that might be erected in um, the approaches to the, to the airport, and I'm just wondering how that might be, uh, th those, those areas might be flagged uh, to the attention of suppliers so that they can take that into consideration. Again, through you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Through you, certainly, um, that's uh, communication towers in and around proximities of um, the airports has been identified. So when we look at these locations, we direct them to areas outside of that. And as um, you had raised earlier, uh, I believe it was about a month ago, about you know any height restrictions that we could have in our flight uh, approaches to the runways um, that we incorporate that in our zoning bylaws. So that's also something that we're working towards doing. Um, communication towers are of course federally regulated, um, but the federal government does take very seriously any comments or concerns that a municipality may have with respect to the location of any um, facility. And so if there were a tower that was proposed, you know, in close proximity to the airport, you have the ability to raise some concerns about that uh, when we prepare these reports and we submit reports for you. And if there is an issue, then um, in all likelihood, uh, the Industry Canada would not approve that location for a uh, siting of a communication tower. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Any others? Um, this is... Uh, I understand for a telecommunications, uh, for a uh, Wi-Fi tower, um, and although their report is very comprehensive in terms of what they're doing, and, and they actually had little diagrams of what the tower will look like from the road, et cetera, which was very impressive, the, the, the piece that uh, previous tower applicant, not really applicant, but tower company had in there was the coverage area. Um, so it'd be interesting to know and perhaps it's once their promotional material comes out, uh, what the coverage area is. I, I, I do often, and perhaps councillors get emails or voicemails or s smoke signals, as the case may be, from individuals living in some of the rural sections or uh, different sections of our community that are, have a difficult or different topography and are saying, we want some sort of coverage. So is there any way that you can perhaps get some sort of map from the proponent uh, to indicate the coverage that they might be providing to the community. Yes, I can certainly request that and then make that available to okay. the Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Anything further from members of committee? If not, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Papp. The committee of the whole received the March 2016 Planning and Development Services Report for information. Questions, comments, planning report? Um, I do have a question, and that's regarding the um, information about building permits. Maybe the director can just outline a little bit what, what it says in the report. I know that was of interest to some members of the community. Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, in the past, on the town's website, we did <coughs> include information. It was a monthly um, kind of summary of uh, building permit activity. And in that summary, it included information around um, particulars of that building permit, the value of it, what it was for, whether it was for an addition or new construction or a pool or things like that. And it also included address of where that building permit was as well as the property owner's name. Um, we received some um, complaints about that by some members of the public who wish to not have that information made public. And um, as a result of that, we have uh, also um, conferred with our uh, clerk regarding that and the decision has been made to remove that information from the town website so that we don't breach any privacy uh, concerns um, and that uh, instead the information in terms of the statistical summary 
um, which we provide in our monthly reports, uh, be made available, and that um, you know provides the adequate information for building permit activity on a monthly basis. Okay, thank you. So, just for clarity, will this information be put up separately, or is it through these reports that? Members of the public will can monitor. Uh, we can certainly take direction from from council. At this point in time, we had indicated it would just be in the summary reports. Uh, but if there is something else that council would prefer, uh, we could also do something different on that. Um, but uh, we felt that the information is, is available here in our monthly uh, reports. Okay. Well, let's let's see what what folks folks think and of how difficult it is or. <laughs> is or isn't to find it uh, from that. I think there are some members of the community that are interested in the uh, building activity. So unless anyone else has a comment on that, Councillor Kersey? Not on that exact point. I have a okay. question about the stats that we see. Okay. More, namely the bar graph, Mr. Go ahead. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, when I look at these, the written statistics and I compare them to the bar graph, it appears that the March of 2015 actually issued more permits than March of 2016. If, but yet the the numeric statistics show the opposite. I'm just asking for a point of clarity there. Uh, Council, I'll have to get back to you on that. You're quite right. There seems to be a bit of discrepancy 24 there versus between 28. what was in the numbers in the chart and what's in the bar graph. So I will confirm that with you. Thank you. That's Thank fine. you very much. Thank you. Anyone else on any other portions of the report? Are we ready for calling the question? All those in favor? Any opposed, that motion is carried. Thank you. We look forward to that clarity regarding building permits. The next item has been moved by Councillor Junkin. The Committee of the Whole received the March 2016 Corporate Services Monthly Report for information. Questions or comments regarding that report? Councillor Kersey, then PAP. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, the first thing is the comp a comment and then a question. The, the statistics that we receive each month in the re corporate services report are very uh, comprehensive, uh, all encompassing. I wonder how much time it takes to compile this and whether in fact having this much detail brought to council is in fact beneficial to council mm. and whether or not we might be much be satisfied with much less st statistics and maybe just general summaries unless the, to point out where there's irregularities that are occurring that we might, I think it might be more useful and a better use of our staff's time rather than compiling these extensive statistics. So my question is how much time are we spending doing this and does that make sense from a corporate services pers perspective? For you, Mr. Mayor. Um, each of these these items here are monthly reports that define what the number of items in that report is. So it's just a matter of looking at the number and providing it to the admin assistant. She plugs it all in. It takes less than half hour for all the staff to compile that information. So it's not cumbersome. We, we're not including that stuff that you would have to go through and analyze and read uh, detail and document and stuff like that. We're just taking those reports that are automatically generated from our systems that automatically give us the monthly totals. Okay, so I guess the question I'm raising now to my council colleagues is do they find benefit to the statistics that we're getting here uh, or would it <coughs> be better to receive a summary that might point out irregularities as opposed to seeing all the statistics? Thank you. Council colleagues to Councillor Kersey's question. Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's no doubt that I find some of the statistics more valuable than others. The number of phone calls received, for example, is not of particular interest to me. But I do uh, like the information with regard to money in, money out, where that's all <coughs> happening. Uh, and I do like as well the, uh, the narrative portions of, of this, which, which gives us uh, quite a bit of color. So I don't know how much work would go into determining which of the few statistics that we might exclude would be worth doing since it takes virtually no effort to provide what's what, what's there. Mm -hmm. But um, <coughs> certainly some are more valuable than others. There's no question. Yeah. Councillor King? Diddle. 
Councilor Kersey. That's fine, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm just trying to find efficiencies and save our staff work uh, and make it make the reports as relevant as possible mm -hmm. to Council so that we can get the material that we need it right. without reading through great redundancy. And, and, and mm -hmm. so if there's no appetite for that, then I, I that's fine. I will stand by and let it happen. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would, well, I would, I would just add perhaps um, sometimes one doesn't know whether there's a an issue or not uh, <clears throat> and so to have the stat there it may look fine for a year and a half and then all of a sudden something pops up those are the types of elements that I would was envisioning would come be drawn specifically to the attention yeah. of council and but uh, that's fine okay thank you anything further on not the on that services? piece but okay I had corporate services other. report and then I do have councillor Pap okay I'm um, very patient <clears throat> The question that I had uh, pertains to the piece in the report with respect to the, the uh, bye bye. community center. And uh, one of the things that uh, wasn't specifically addressed in the presentation that was made on the 22nd, and uh, perhaps the treasurer could speak to, uh, I wonder about the bridge financing that most likely would be incurred during the time if and when we approve it and we in you know, enter into a program to sell off residual lands, surplus lands, to the time that we actually realize the benefit of the sale of those those lands. There's going to be a, a, a time frame in there, you know, anywhere from one to five years, let's say. So how do we envision bridging that and, and would there be an impact on the levy or not or that sort of thing? So thank yeah, you. I'd like some clarity on that if I could. Madam Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as we discussed at, I think it was the budget meeting and not so much at the March 22nd meeting, there's very, very many options with respect to how we can debenture these, the amounts that will be debentured. So um, I envision that we would debenture up front the component that would be the tax levy and probably the component that would be the DC uh, portion. And that would drive us uh, generating some investment income that would be used to pay any uh, loan debt. I'm not anticipating that we'll see any uh, bridge financing loan debt until late 2017, 2018, which would give us ample time to collect on the investments that we would, we would be looking for. So okay. in the interim, if you debenture, if we debenture uh, a portion of this, say in August, September, yes. the first payment will be in December of this year. Um, that money could be invested in the interim to collect revenues and generate interest income that could help fund future uh, uh, loan. And if you look at the Canada Infrastructure website, I think the uh, interest component for bridge finance is 1.74, so it's very minimal. So when we get to the construction loan portion, I will only be doing draws as necessary as opposed to upfront. So. So, so just for further clarity, if there is a shortfall between what is earned on the 12 million plus the 9 million, so 21 million dollars invested, generating funds, uh, and then if there still is a shortfall in that period, you know, once we get to that point, we've expended that money, we have no longer finance, but we're still uh, falling short of the 12 million dollars on the sale of the land. Not that just because of market conditions. Are you saying then we would then take a line of credit, use an operating line of credit? from build the uh, Ontario Build Fund, or are you envisioning that there'd be enough in-house monies that we could we could bridge that, that time frame during the sale? Yes, thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, the Infrastructure Ontario funding component, um, you know, I've had lots of discussions with about exactly that. What if the sale of lands takes up to five years? Um, so they, um, and part of the uh, debenture by bylaw, borrowing bylaw, sorry, um, they've agreed that they will allow us an extension of three years past the date of complete construction of the project to sell that additional land. So that gives us five years out, okay? So that's, that's one aspect that we kind of covered off on. Um, if we haven't sold any lands that could help set, uh, finance some of that interest component, we certainly would finance it in-house until the lands were sold so that there would be no impact on the tax levy. And we've done that with many uh, other projects and we t until we decided how to fund them or how to debenture them in the past. So it's not something new that we're doing. It's just making sure that the tax levy is no longer impacted for this community centre. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that clarity. I think that helps to assuage some of the concerns around this table, but also out in the public. So it might be important to have something along that line available for the, the, the public open houses as well. The 
Madam Treasurer. Yeah. Thank you. you. Uh, yeah, and I'm just I'm it's reaching out to the Niagara Region, who is responsible for helping us through this process with all the details, so that I'm getting all my ducks in a row before that meeting, so we have everything outlined. But definitely, something will come to that meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Pat. Well, Councillor Kersey uh, read my mind, so I can't be any more clear. You have to be. We have to be clear to the public. You may understand the financing. We understand it, and I'm being not being critical. General public doesn't understand this. They see 37 million debentures sale. I think we got to be prepared to at least say, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to finance it. This is the impact it's going to have. And also explain the development charges. I've had several discussions yeah, with people have come to me and said, that's great, Peter, $12 million, where is it? So without getting into all the dynamics, all I'm just saying is be well prepared as you hear me say, I'll immunize us from that kind of criticism because we're going to get targeted. Say, geez, that sounds so great, but what in reality is going to happen? Sale of property could take three to five years. The development charges are going to happen as such. I'm not directing you how to do it, but just so you can explain it to the general public. We're going to borrow $9 million debenture, the things that Councilor Kersey is talking about. This is how we're going to do it. Self-finance it inside to make sure to the time that the building is open. <coughs> When are we going to pay the debt? Those are kinds of things that I think you, I, I don't have to say, we've got to be prepared to answer because we're being asked the same questions. They want to know. Um, so I, I think if that sort of, I don't know what to call it, a briefing note, you know, just some sort of a, I'm not saying it, you know, like a, like yep. a note, I would say, Madam Treasurer, did, did somebody I can have say, look, this, this explains how we structured this whole financing deal. Do you know what I mean? And, and so the confusion of bridge financing, all this stuff, it just gets too, uh, that's what I was talking to this guy in the back about, burning my ears off. <coughs> and, and also, where is the money coming from? I know it sounds, Infrastructure Canada is going to help Infrastructure Ontario. Explain it, you know, like so that people capiche. And they feel comfortable, and we feel comfortable explaining it as well. Yeah. Is that going on TV? I guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think the briefing Oops, too late. Great idea. Yeah, thank Brief, you, uh, Madam. Madam Treasurer, to, uh, would be, uh, to I, I, I would I would suggest to you, Madam Treasurer, that be very very helpful, and and notwithstanding what you said, to tell them about how the region we get involved with them. Tell them this, explain this process to them, mm -hmm. so they they get it. Madam Treasurer. Um, uh, certainly, there will be information provided that will uh, explain the funding. Um, what I'm cognizant in is not getting caught up in specifically saying this is how something's going to be done because sale of lands would tra would translate that into being done a separate way. Right. So we, we just need to know what all the, the components are of how this funding can happen in the future yeah. without any impact on the levy. And yeah. that's the, the piece that I'm trying to put together with the region and infrastructure Perfect. Ontario. That's the elephant in the room. So Perfect. so you could say, like, I mean, just I'm talking about the, Folks, I told him, I said it's going to be maybe three to five years before it's all property. Is there interest? Yes, there is. I don't want to get into the diamond. There is. Mm -hmm. It's going to take us so much time to get the... But that type of briefing note is very, very helpful. And then you don't have to get into all the specifics of all the... Mm -hmm. And who are the players? Like, who's involved? Mm -hmm. It's yep. not like we're going to, you know, if we... Yep. 37 million is going to materialize in some sort of line of credit or some sort of mortgage, you know. I'm just talking about the general consumer who we're trying to figure this all out. So they feel comfortable, and we feel comfortable explaining it too. We could be. We could be. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Glenn's already. You were talking about him. Yeah. So we're talking with the individual that's currently in the, <laughs> no, in the room. Glenn, not, someone else. Not, not you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm happy. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> hey, anyone else to be either on that issue? First of all. And now to other issues in the uh, Corporate Services Report. Councillor Rubiak. Th thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mayor. And I uh, just want to, uh, to make a comment with regard to the item in the report called Staff Changes. Um, received uh, an email earlier today with regard to uh, an upcoming staff change. Um, the clerk will have to indicate to me whether it's appropriate to name specific individuals, we may have to go into camera for this, and I think it would be a waste to, to do that. Let me just uh, say that, that the, the person who was identified within that email as announcing her retirement, I believe was, was the embodiment of customer service within, uh, within Helm uh, uh, staff. 
Uh, my own personal dealings with that individual were such that, that uh, there were never problems, only solutions that came from that individual. And I think that that's a rare quality and I think we're going to miss it. So um, just wanted to, do, to, to mention that and uh, it's with some regret that I, that I hear she's retiring. On the other hand, great congratulations on, on her decision and best wishes for a tremendous retirement. Thank you, much, Councillor. Uh, the treasurer has indicated that we can say her name. It is public. Well, here, here, Elaine. <laughs> oh, yeah, Elaine Ronald. Yes. She yes, is. here, here. Awesome. Thank you. Marvelous, marvelous, Thank you. marvelous person. Thank you. And I'm sure the treasurer will take that back to uh, Ms. Ronald and uh, all of council certainly uh, appreciates her many years of service, uh, and she announced that she'll be retiring uh, in three months' time or, or so. So giving us lots of time in order to Good. try and fill that huge <laughs> hole that she's, uh, that she's leaving. It's going to be very difficult to do so. Um, and the appropriate celebrations. And the appropriate celebrations as well of her public service. I think this is another mm -hmm. situation where we acknowledge public service. And I think that's what Ms. Ronald has certainly uh, given to the community for many, many years. Uh, I did have a conversation with her uh, today with, in the treasurer's office and saying how we're going to miss her and how, how I, I'm sure many, many residents in the town will, will miss her service. So thank you very much for highlighting it, Councillor, and uh, we'll keep your ears open for uh, retirement parties and things like that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Papp. I had I, just quickly, and I'll say it at, at her retirement. I had the pleasure of teaching her through the AMCT course, and she was just an absolute professional. Secondly, I think both Councilor Durley and I know number of times she was approached to go to other municipalities for more money, and that and she turned them down. Mm -hmm. That says a lot about how much she was caring and dedicated to this. And I'm we're going to miss her big time. Thank you. Thank you all. Anything else to the? Uh, <laughs> Corporate Services Report. Madam Treasurer, I do have a question about the uh, tender amounts. Um, and the one was regarding ditching and the other regarding sidewalk construction. So I don't know if you're able to answer this on the fly um, or whether the uh, Director of Public Works is, um, the community will recall, Council will recall that we put off the tendering of some of these because the pricing we received in the fall was at that point above budget and I'm just wondering where these are fitting in um, I presume they're under budget if they're or if they've been awarded so was it a successful strategy is my question who wants to tackle that one Ms. Clementio sure through you Mr. Mayor um, I'm trying to recall the ditching one Let me just look it up oh the treasurer has the, the specific number do you yes no? so I've got the numbers here um, it did come in less than what it came in at the end of the year last year so there Great. were two that were above budget and one that came in lower and that same um, firm had indicated to us when they bid last year that they were too busy to do the work mm -hmm. which was the reason for their high bid at the time um, and they did some rejigging of uh, working through how they would do this particular contract and was able to save us um, a fair amount of money, so the award went to the lowest bidder in that one. <laughs> and the um, concrete one is actually still over what we would have budgeted for um, the 2015 program, but because we knew we had uh, the 2016 mm -hmm. program to pool together, we were able to make sure that, that these were now essential works to get done, mm -hmm. so it just will decrease the scope of the program that happen, will happen mm -hmm. later on in the year. Okay. Well, perhaps we can hear more about that in in uh, in subsequent reports from what's what's the impact of that. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Anything further on the corporate services? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councillor Kersey, the committee of the whole, received the March 2016 fire services report for information. Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, firstly, uh, let me comment that uh, it 
is unfortunate that we lost a dedicated employee uh, in Saskia, our, our fire prevention officer, and uh, she did do a very good job for mm -hmm. us. But, but having said that, uh, it does give us an opportunity to, or at least me, an opportunity to raise the question regarding whether or not uh, we require a full-time fire prevention officer mm -hmm. or if we could, in fact, explore uh, perhaps uh, shared agreements with adjacent municipalities that might be in need of some partial coverage and, and it might help to reduce some costs to, uh, to Pelham. So through you, Mr. Mayor, perhaps uh, Chief might comment on that. Chief Limburner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, that position is a busy position, and uh, I would say that probably in the next, uh, due to the forecasted uh, uh, development and the expansion of the town, I would say sometime in the next five years I'd probably be asking for an additional, not reducing it, but to increase in that position. Um, you know, we're into uh, the, the, the key component to uh, fire prevention is education, pub ed, enforcement, inspection, so forth. Uh, we do a lot in the town. We're very diverse in what we deliver in the fire prevention. Case in point, recently, unfortunately, one of our northern communities just lost nine yes. members. And those those uh, fire losses are not due to um, fire suppression activities or lack thereof. It's because most of those places are usually heavily compromised before the fire even shows. It's because there's no inspection, there's no fire alarms, there's no smoke alarms, there's no certified fireplaces. There's just no fire prevention whatsoever. So I'm not saying that those nine lives could have been saved, uh, but there's probably a good chance that life safety could have been enhanced and great, the risk could have been greatly reduced by having a comprehensive fire prevention program. So the, the better the program you have, the safer we make it. So um, I, I can appreciate you looking at, you know, maybe, but if anything, I would say we should increase our activities in fire prevention. Thank you, Chief. Councillor? Well, uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, thanks for uh, being very clear on that. Uh, it, I, I wasn't convinced one way or the other, but I did want to use the opportunity at least to have a discussion around that, uh, given the, the costs of, of employing a full-time person. But uh, I hear your argument with respect to prevention, and, and certainly uh, in many walks of life, prevention is far cheaper than, uh, than treatment. And so... Uh, I'll defer to your expertise on that and not pursue the matter any further. <laughs> I'm being respectful of our staff. Why are you here? Thank you, Councilor. Appreciate it. And it's a, it's a good question to ask, and I think that's what folks expect us to ask those questions. Um, so thank you. Others to the uh, fire services report. Uh, certainly, we wish uh, Saskia the best. And uh, I, you, have you heard from her, Chief, as she settled and landed and all of that? Yes, um, she has. She started a new job. Um, last week was her first full week. Um, she's happy that she's in the sunny south. <laughs> There's never any snow there. and it's. Uh, but she's got a huge opportunity in, in front of her. It's right up her alley. That there's, there's, uh, speaking of fire prevention, uh, there's very little of it in uh, those communities. And uh, she's starting from the ground. Uh, floor and she's going to be working in developing programs and inspection and so forth. So uh, she's excited. I'm excited for it because it, it's right up her alley. So yeah. that's great. Thank you very much, Chief. We we wish her the best. Thank you. Anyone else to the fire services report and bylaw report? Thank you very much. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Next item has been moved by Councillor Durley of the Committee of the Whole receive the March 2016 Human Resources Department Report for information. Questions or comments? Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I noticed there's a couple of new hires. I, I would like uh, actually to, if, if we could get a notice of people as they are hired, if we can get an email saying so-and-so will be starting. I know we have on occasion, but I haven't seen that lately and seeing these two people. I'd like to stay up to date on who's here, and I'd like to come in and meet these people, and uh, that would be much appreciated. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Councillor. Others? I just want to commend uh, the director uh, for giving us information about this employee well-being program. 
very comprehensive program and um, very very interesting in terms of the approach um, that you're taking. I think it's commendable in terms of the relationship between the employee and the employer um, and trying to adopt a holistic approach to that relationship. Some, you know, with quoting this report, we are more than just a position and um, we hold and the job we do, and it's similar to what we spoke about earlier with one of our valued employees who's uh, retiring. Um, and in order to be holistic to the organization, employees have to believe his or her involvement with the town and achieving that goal is aligned with their individual life goal. So it's very good work, and, and I want to commend you, uh, Director, for, for putting this together and working together with members of the staff on this, the senior management team, et cetera. The physical well-being, which you've talked about here, a walking group and, and you know, other things, yoga, et cetera, and all that, that type of thing, but also the mental well-being, coping with stress, uh, book club, et cetera, talent sharing, uh, and then the financial <coughs> well-being as well. So really looking at the holistic view of, of the staff. So thank you very much, Madam Director, for, uh, for overseeing that and leading that. Councilor Riviak, you wanted to... Yeah, on this on the same point. Go ahead, Councillor. Please, I, I too am impressed with the program. Just a quick question, though, with respect to uh, how available are all of these programs to both our inside and our outside workers? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, when I had the um, focus group last week, we had some um, uh, representation from our um, outside workers, and they recognized that it it's a, could be a little more of a challenge, but they're equally as uh, engaged which is why we have things like the Tice Road Boot Camp and the Mutter Challenge. We really feel that we can play on what those groups have to offer by doing outside obstacle courses and, and maybe make it a, a whole town event. So it, it might be a little bit different, but we absolutely see it still uh, being something that we can roll out both at the Tice Road and the arena. Thank you. Come Thank on. you, Mr. Mayor. And with respect to um, uh, some of the, the subjects that are covered uh, in, in, in the lunch and learn sessions, for example, those things dealing with financial well-being and others, those are also available? Oh, absolutely. Good. Yes. So okay. again, those will go out invitations um, uh, to all staff. And depending on the number of people that respond, will determine where, what venue we have in. So whether we have it here at Council Chambers, if it's a smaller group, or perhaps just over at the, the fire hall um, uh, for our larger group. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good to hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Kersey? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On, on all of these points, uh, I, I hate to be a Grinch. I'm, I'm supportive of the, the concept of the holistic approach to staff. I'm, I'm somewhat concerned that the assistance that we are given would be regarded as, for example, financial advice or mental health care advice. So we need to have some disclaimer statement made that, for example, in the case of financial advice or financial assistance, discussing their financial health and all of that sort of thing, that we're giving it to them um, as a point of information, but that we recommend that they seek assistance of their own financial advisor before making any prior any specific decision with respect to their financial health just using financial health as an example and the same could be true with respect to their physical health their mental health all of that sort of thing so I'll, I know you'll take that into consideration but I just wanted to put it out there that I, I have some concerns in that I don't think we want to immunize quote my, my esteemed colleague, we need to immunize the municipality and the corporation from a reflection that the staff is interpreting that we're giving them financial yes. advice, for example. Okay. Okay. Three, Mr. Ms. Mayor, Gilbert. Um, I, a very valid point, absolutely, and I will make sure that we're well protected. And um, just so I'm clear as well that um, uh, when we do these lunch and learns, we will be bringing in professionals in their industry. So, for instance, I've already reached out to our partners at Mosey and Mosey to get Green Shield in to talk about their uh, wonderful program, Change for Life. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to go online and see that, but that's open to all of our staff because we are Green Shield members. And I don't think it's a health um, um, you know, benefit that we're using yet. So to get them in to, to mm -hmm. promote it, to show them what's available to them. Um, but absolutely, if I'm bringing in a local nutritionist, I'll make sure that, that the staff is aware that we're bringing it in um, for education purposes only, and this is not something that the town is necessarily recommending or that it's the opinion of the town. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. 
Good point as well. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Been moved by Councillor Riviak, the committee of the whole received the March 2016 Public Works and Utilities Report for information. Questions or comments? Councillor Riviak. Councillor Durbin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and through you to the director. The, the item referred to as engineering capital makes reference to unexpected engineering costs of the arena and Maple Acres expansion. Could you just describe what we're talking about with respect to the expansion? Maple Acres expansion. Mm -hmm. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it was to cover uh, some topographic work, um, some surveying work that wasn't included. So I guess the the reports that were available on hand from the Fenwick project didn't give enough detail for um, the Maple Acres uh, designers. So they needed something more in depth. So it was unexpected that we would have uh, to do some more topographic work. So we were able to use some of the engineering um, budget to cover that cost. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, so do I understand that, that that's a cost in addition to the million dollar general outlay that we've made for the project or is that within that envelope? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It would be outside of the scope of that million dollar project. And why? Who can answer that? No, no. CEO? <laughs> <laughs> graphics or is it boreholes? It's, it's topographics? Mr. CEO, do you know? Yeah, I believe it was surveying and there was a request for additional uh, uh, boreholes to be done for foundation. Uh, we have questioned the requirement for that work and uh, uh, I've certainly been in contact with the uh, facilities manager with regards to, the, to whether or not the survey work is in or out of the million dollar scope. I believe it should be in. Uh, I think it's yeah. standard that a, uh, a company would, would do the surveying required to do a building and not say that it's outside of the scope of the contract. So um, that's an item that I'll clarify and maybe report back to council on. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad that's being looked at. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, we have a major challenge at Sulphur Spring. The uh, road is uh, certainly our responsibility. However, what caused the damage, I'm not sure, is our responsibility. When that uh, the uh, water that comes down that slope, uh, I, I'm just wondering, that caused the damage. I'm just wondering, are we fully responsible, or is there other groups, perhaps the MPCA or somebody else, that uh, is, is supposed to be looking at these types of things? And uh, you know, I'm just wondering if, if the whole liability for this lies on us. I know the road definitely is, but the cause of the problem is what concerns me. Director. Part of this investigation will help us zero in on what the actual cause is. We have a, a few theories. We can see things happening, um, but we can't confirm it until we get a qualified consultant. So that work has already started. They were on site last Friday. Um, we've been in touch with the MPCA, we've been in touch with the region, so the communication has started um, and that's why we thought we'd start by paying for this investigation and then the outcomes of that investigation will have recommendation for repair including root cause of, of what's happened and why. At that time with the technical report in hand we'd be better suited to start pursuing whether there's other parties we can pursue for help. Thank you. I have full confidence that you would have control of this situation, and I'm, I'm glad you have. And the, uh, like I say, the concern is there if, in fact, the responsibility for the, the damage is not completely ours, it should be shared, and we should definitely uh, have the people willingly share with us in the, in the cost. So, thank you. Thank you. Others? Councillor Kersey and then uh, Pop. To that uh, same issue, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I've lived in that area for 40 years, so I've seen changes out there, and there were certainly changes made in the recent past that have uh, significantly altered the flow of that stream and, and the runoff of the lands around there. Uh, and it, it seems to me that even in, with respect to the study, 
uh, the Escarpment Commission and the Ministry of Natural Resources should be involved in the cost of covering those studies because, in fact, the reparative work there, uh, there's going to be some serious restrictions on contamination with respect to that uh, that that crick and and uh, I'm not sure that the municipality wants to take on that that liability and responsibility. So, I think we should be engaging those people in a full and uh, a fulsome discussion with respect to how we move forward before we do anything because uh, they have significant control over uh, over that stream and also over the lands there. So I, I see it as mainly their problem. If we have to fix the road, so be it. But I think the shoring up of the the walls of uh, around that stream uh, should be looked at. Even the repair work that was done after the flooding of the, the big storm that we had a couple of years ago is starting to give way. The Gambian baskets are starting to slip and the, the paving that was done is starting to crack. So the, the I think that whole area needs to be looked at and that's a scope of, of study that probably exceeds the money that, that we in the municipality could afford to cover. So. I think we need a, a more fulsome approach to it and, and involve the ministries right at the get-go and get them involved in, and get, the, get, their, get their bank books opened up to be part and parcel of this process. So uh, I'd like to give some staff direction to that, to, to that uh, Mr. Mayor. I don't know how quite to word it other than we engage those, all of those ministries, including the, the region, uh, with respect to studying the root cause of the problem and how it might be remediated and what those costs uh, uh, might be. Thank you. Interestingly, I, I believe Council would have received an invitation today uh, from the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority about looking at 12 Mile Creek. Yes. And so they are studying this, and I believe this is part of the tributaries of, uh, of the 12 Mile it Creek. Is. It is. So it, they do have, you know, ownership of that of that uh, body. Sometimes uh, maybe we do something with a road or something, or something like that's done that impacts that. But it is their their uh, legislative responsibility. So um, the director's shaking her head. That's not the case. Um, if I may, Mr. Mayor, from my experience with this, um, the NPCA, and I might be corrected here, but my experience with other creek issues, especially pertaining to impact on roads, the NPCA uh, regulates the body, the creek, but the NPCA doesn't own the land. Right. So the NPCA has um, authority to uh, direct actions, but the NPCA doesn't ever give funds towards um, asset improvements or anything particular to a, an area of the creek. So, uh, but taking into account for sure, uh, NEC, NEC, MNR um, will make sure that that's all brought to the table early on um, and we'll get to that immediately. My experience in the past with this has been as long as the impact is to a road, and in this case a given road, um, then we are the ones that initiate and steer and then pull the parties in as, as we need because the impact isn't affecting or um, a, the impact isn't, uh, they're not the ones that are suffering any loss or deterioration, it's our asset that's affected. <coughs> so that's kind of the angle we took for the geotech because of the emergency um, situation we're trying to get this road at least assess can we open it or not um, but we can slow it down put the brakes on pull in the other parties as needed and, and make sure go, go ahead counselor it might be a, a also another approach to it is that we approach them on the basis that the collapse is is causing contamination of the tributary of the 12 mile creek and 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 maybe damaging the fish habitat and all of these things that are so critical and so near and dear to their heart that if we take that approach they might be more interested in jumping on board and trying to rectify it a little bit quicker Agree, mr mayor we could um the contamination cost for re, re uh, mitigation would could in part come back to the municipality mm -hmm. municipalities on the hook for keeping that creek um, clean or responding to emergencies related to it. So the more we signal them about potential contamination, the more we might be shooting ourselves in the foot 
for cleanup afterwards. Just have to be aware of that, not mm -hmm. to say nope, that nope. we don't take it into consideration. So there is an upcoming information session that the Niagara Peninsula Conservation is holding and Trout Unlimited, Niagara Chapter are hosting. <coughs> uh, I think Councillor Junkin, you were part of that meeting where there were some individuals with um, Trout Unlimited and members of the NPCA that were um, wanting to do this and raise raise the issue. So that's coming up at uh, Lookout Point Country Club on Thursday, April 14th at 7 p.m. And it says here, the goal of the meeting is to launch our 12 Mile Creek Landowner Stewardship Guide and provide landowners with tips on improving the ecology of the creek. And there's an invitation that was uh, sent around and uh, presumably as the director indicated, we are one of the landowners that, uh, that are in that area. Um, the final piece is that when we approve their, the NPCA's budget at the region, uh, there is limited dollars in that budget for uh, some improvements in, in various creeks and rivers throughout Niagara. So if there are some dollars and we can tap into them, we should, as far as I'm concerned as well. So I hope that's helpful. And then Thank uh, you. it sounds like staff are, are working together with various ministries uh, to ensure that uh, this is looked at. <coughs> Anyone else to that to that issue? Thank you. Other issues, Councillor Papp, you had. Sorry, I, go ahead. Very quickly, uh, I just uh, want to highlight a quick things through you to the director. Um, talk about creativity and the ability to look at things and immunizing. Uh, I congratulate the road staff for designing and changing a hazard in a work process. Sounds like a small thing, but if injuries occur, the staff actually came up with a device. And that's part of our whole creative approach and getting people to use their, you know, their, um, their ability and their uh, skills. Secondly, I want to mention, I mentioned it briefly at the mayor's lunch, that I want to congratulate the uh, staff that for the work that was done at the Welland Road and Hay Street uh, water main. I happened to be right there at the time, and it was done so effectively, so efficiently, and within, I'd say, less than four or five hours. I know there's still some work to be done, but you have to close the road. And it was done. I watched professionally how all that was handled. So send my send our best regards to the staff. That was truly good customer uh, service because people understood what was happening and how it was mm -hmm. happening. So uh, amazing. But again, here we go again. We got cast iron pipes all over the place, right? We don't know what happens at times, and when it does uh, happen, it's usually a pretty major event. So thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Pav. I too wanted to comment on the innovative approach that staff are taking to yep. various uh, components of their work and always trying to find the best or a best, a better solution yeah. uh, to, to the work that they've been doing. So it's, it is very commendable. So I'm sure the director will pass along to, to staff. Thank you. Any others on the director's report? Councillor Kersey? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, to keep bringing things up, but no, it's good. This, this, uh, there's some interesting stuff here that needs mm. to be talked about. Um, one, oh, how do I practice this? Thank you for being very frank in the in your presentation with respect to service levels. But having said that, it raises concerns about the service levels going forward. We're going to be adding a great degree of parkland and trails and uh, flower beds, presumably, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I just would like some assurance that, that we will be looking at this and taking a very proactive approach with respect to uh, the service levels we hope to attain and uh, the, the standard that we want to have our municipality at. It it's, serves very little purpose to put in, for example, a flower bed and then let the flower bed deteriorate. So, you know, you make allusion to the fact that we have 89 flower beds, but most of them are only going to have be looked at a couple of times during the course of the season. So is that how we want to have our flower beds look? So if that's not how, how and we have a limit based on another report that was brought forward, we have limited staff to allocate to those. How are we going to address the, the demands for service, the standards that we set and envision within our, our uh, strategic plan and, and our concept for our municipality and the deficiency in the staffing levels uh, going forward? Through you, Mr. Mayor, and I might ask uh, 
Director of Human Resources or the CAO to comment as well, but we have been uh, kind of getting our heads together around a long-term staffing strategy. plan, a strategy to uh, at least say, okay, what are we, where are we heading, and what staffing <coughs> is required just to project out what we're doing now, and then we're identifying some potential gaps and how can we not just fill it, saying we need a person here, we need a person there, but how can they best be utilized because especially a lot of our work is seasonal and shifts um, so we just in fact met today and uh, started getting some uh, wheels turning that's not the first meeting um, but to say what's our five-year plan and so on trying to picture year by year <coughs> this forward um, including uh, East Font Hill and the plans there and uh, as well just going forward with what we currently have uh, thank you uh, for that, Madam Director, through you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I take it within that, that looking forward and putting together a plan that you'll be also taking into consideration the concept of contracting out, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps taking the approach that we train our staff to such a level that they become overseers of the work as opposed to doers of the work, and that we could then employ because a lot of it is seasonal, we could use seasonal employees or we could use contracting out to, to be able to manage uh, with less per, the same complement of permanent staff but more highly trained permanent staff so that we get directorship as opposed to, you know, just straight labor out of it. I think that may be one approach. The other approach that I would hope that you would incorporate in the plan and we could maybe uh, throw over to uh, the beautification committee on the short term is for example with bed maintenance, employment of uh, volunteers. Uh, you know we have a horticultural society in the community, they might be able to adopt a bed or you start an adopt a bed program where uh, citizens might be willing to go uh, to the beds and weed them periodically and make sure that the flowers have been trimmed and pruned and whatever. Just, you know, all of what goes into maintaining beds. I'm not a, a flower guy, but I just think we need to think outside the box to try and meet the shortfall in the mm -hmm. service levels that, that mm -hmm. we, we hope we have. So, thank you, Madam Director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have an adopt a bed program already active and we do this year have some new um, people that have come forward that want to adopt beds local to them. So that's on the radar already happening which is good. Part of our meeting today was to talk about contracted versus in house um, and our uh, decision making has primarily, <coughs> primarily been based on where do you have a lot of uh, constituent interaction? What kind of services do we provide that they really need to <coughs> knock on the door and explain the work they did versus bulk actions that can be contracted out and aren't as sensitive to those matters? Is that kind of partially where we were coming at for how to decide? Uh, we weren't getting into the specifics yet, but it's definitely on our minds of where can we contract and where do we need that expertise in-house? Thank you. Thank you. There, there, just a, for instance, there was a, um, an owner of a business in the Ridgeville area that was quite interested in uh, adopting the bed there at the corner of Effingham and, and Cambro and raised that at the Trillium Awards. And uh, so I'm pleased that, that we're following through with that and that's a possibility. So some good ideas there and uh, no doubt the Beautification Committee uh, will consider those as well in tandem with working with staff. So thank you very much for raising that. We look forward to hearing more about it. Thanks. Thank you. Anything further under the uh, Public Works and Utilities Report? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Ribiak that Committee of the Whole receive the issue sheet Canada Day 2016 and that committee recommends that Council of the Town of Pelham declare Pelham's 2016 Canada Day celebration as a municipally significant event. Questions? Comments? Councilor Durling. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The discussion concerning the beer and wine garden, I'm wondering why they're choosing the hours that they are choosing. It, it, it seems to me that, uh, um, you know, the heat of the day is uh, is, is a time where Some. someone may like to have a quaff and, and uh, um, you know, they're saying, first of all, starting it at 6 o'clock and then starting it at 3 and a half, it, like, why not have it open like Summerfest is for, for the full license period I, and our director isn't here but I, I'm just wondering what the rationale behind that. Thank you. 
Is there Mr. CAO? Can you answer that? Uh, I'm not sure I can answer it uh, other than my understanding is uh, a number of things, including staff availability, et cetera. There's a lot of events going on during the Canada Day period where, you know, there's parades and there's all sorts of things being coordinated. Um, but it is a question that I'd have to look at a little bit more closely with the director, who unfortunately isn't here. Um, uh, however, uh, this is a bit time sensitive. We do need the lead time to get the permit into the AGO. So uh, it's something that uh, the director's asked that uh, uh, this proceed in her absence, but it was something that we can certainly follow up on. Thank you, Councillor Durling. Yeah, Mr. Mary, through you, just if we do uh, pass a declaration that it is municipally significant, that that is the, uh, the go ahead to get the permit, and then the hours is can be adjusted at any time. So uh, let's say I just would like somebody to uh, just have a look at the rationale for that and uh, and, and see. I'm not, a, not that I'm objecting to the hours, I'm just wondering why. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <coughs> Others? Um, the, the, um, the licensed area is the, I can understand why they're proposing it's the, essentially the baseball diamond. Um, traditionally there isn't Food in that area will that be will that change, Mr. CEO? <coughs> I have no clue, Mr. Mayor. It's something that I have to ask the director. I don't know. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Percy. I see you signaling there. Well, o only to say that um, having it you know, as a licensed area should not impact on whether food would be there or not be there in that it would become like a festival area that similar to what we have in the back on the Thursday nights where we have, mm -hmm. you know, the, the supper market and it's also the licensed area. So I, I think, I mean, we should get clarity on that, but I think uh, that would probably be the vision that was there. Okay. I think that specific area in, in speaking to uh, actually uh, Miss Yeager today uh it was chosen primarily because it's lit it's also fenced and it has a gate to control access right. so it's easier to man and to to manage the 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 um restriction on on mobility with respect to the beer and wine okay that's all helpful thank you very much any further discussion to this you ready for calling of the question all those in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. The director will be back at council. Is that? And uh, perhaps we can, if there are still burning questions, we can ask on the 18th when council considers the recommendation from committee. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Papp. The committee of the whole received the issue sheet supper market 2016 report and that committee of the whole recommends that council designate Pelham supper market as an event of municipal significance to be held on Thursday evenings from June 2nd to September 29th, 2016 and that the proposed operating details be approved as presented in the report including licensing the north portion of Peace Park for the upcoming season and the staff meet with the Farmers Market Committee, the Banshell Concert Series in the fall of 2016 to review the feedback received by the proposed survey subcommittee and present recommendations to Council for the 2017 operations. Questions, comments? Pretty straightforward. Councilor Papp, you want to say? Yeah, straightforward. I just I have to smile when I think back when we first started this and what we went through trying mm -hmm. to get established it. Now what's happened, <laughs> we've gone from battling to expansion. Yeah and extending the time period uh, and it just goes to show that yeah, you recall right. that we were well Carlson Chrissy you were with me yeah I'm so pleased it's just gone off like uh, gangbusters mm -hmm. thank you counselor it is a huge success and it's great Very to see good, that okay. uh, we're expanding that success and trying to meet the uh, great community demand it's one of the one of the things about our community um, that's great in the summer Councilor Rubiak Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Perhaps um, someone can, can just, just remind me of the proposed survey subcommittee. There's no indication within the body of the report as to, to what that is. I, I can't remember. Who's proposing it? What's it made up? Councillor Papp, can you perhaps assist us? Um, 
I, I think it says here on the second page, uh, survey set up of a survey subcommittee to receive comments and suggestions from the public attending the Thursday night evening experience. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a there's, small, there's group a with small group with one representative staff, of yeah, each. They, they do. They did that last right. year. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I, I see you now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Let's hope there's no snow Not today. <laughs> it's been moved by Councillor King, the committee of the whole, recommend to Council of the Town of Pelham the following that, for reasons outlined in this report, Council designate Pelham Summerfest as a festival of municipal significance to be held as a four day event from Thursday, July 14th to Sunday, July 17th, and that the clerk be authorized to make the application for a special occasion permit for Pelham Summerfest on Thursday, July 14th, Friday, July 15th, Saturday, July 16th, and Sunday, July 17th, and that the mayor and clerk be authorized to enter into agreements with the four licensed establishments within the licensed area to which the special occasion permit applies, those establishments being Zest Restaurant, the Cafe on Main and Wine Bar, Mokus Restaurant, and Gelato Village, and that the Town of Pelham offer no objections to the request from those restaurants, including um, Kettle and Cane Beer Works, for the representative applications for a patio extension for the Pelham Summerfest subject to the following condition, that the selling and serving of alcohol to the approved outdoor area shall occur only between the hours of 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Friday, July 15th. All patios must be cleared of patrons by midnight and also between 11 a.m. and midnight on Saturday, July 16th, and that an outdoor area shall be cleared of patrons by 1 a.m. on Sunday, July 17th, and that Council authorize a variance to the Town of Pelham bylaw number 3130, being a bylaw to regulate and the control of noise for the purpose of facilitating the Pelham Summerfest musical venues and outdoor movie nights being conducted as part of the event from 4 p.m. Friday, July 15th until 1 a.m. on Sunday, July 17th. And further, the Council authorize the following road closures. Pelham Town Square from rear entrance to Fod Hill Plaza to 60 meters west from 4 p.m. Thursday, July 14th to 10 p.m. same day. Pelham Town Square entrance off Pelham Street from 7 a.m. Friday, July 15th to noon, Monday, July 18th, 2016. Pelham Street from Regional Road 20, Highway 20, to College Street from 12 p.m. Friday, that's noon, uh, July 15th to 1 a.m. Sunday, July 17th and Pelham Town Square from 150 meters west of Station Street to its termination at Fawn Hill Plaza entrance from 7 a.m. Sunday, July 17th to 5 p.m. the same day. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I did want to clarify one thing. I, I spoke to, again, Sally today. Um, <clears throat> The section which is authorizing the mayor and clerk to enter into agreements with respect to the four establishments, it should be five. Mm -hmm. uh, Cayman Kettle uh, Beer Works would now like to be part of the, uh, f what, for want of a better word, the festival area and extend their license into that area. So we need to add uh, the Cayman Kettle Beer Works to that section and authorize the mayor and. Okay, and so you're making that amendment so that it would yes. be the. Fourth paragraph, I guess, would be that uh, Mayor Clerk enter agreements with the five licensed establishments yes. within the licensed area, including, and we'll add their name, <coughs> Cane and Kettle Beer Works. Yes. Okay. And can I call the question on the amendment? All those in favor? Any opposed? The amendment carries. Thank you for raising that. Any further discussion to the main motion as amended? Uh, I do have, I did get some feedback, and since the director isn't here, Councillor Kirsty, maybe you can answer this or maybe the CEO I will, can. I will try. Um, some feedback from some businesses on Pelham Street in that area that's closed down on the Friday, that the road was closed down early, and uh, they had hoped for half a day of business. Um, so if we are posting it at noon on the Friday, I guess my question is, is that the right time? Does it need to be earlier? And if it is that time, can we stick to the time? 
I don't know if that's a fair if, question if for I, you. Yeah, I can go ahead, Councilor. Uh, two years ago, in fact, we did we did run into a problem with that. Uh, we had given a designated time, and in fact, we were off the mark a little bit early and closed it a bit early. Last year, we were much more cognizant of that. There were preparatory uh, items that were did take place, but it did not stop through traffic or okay. access to that area prior to noon. We were very cognizant of that, <coughs> given what the circumstances that we were uh, went through the last time. But when we review the logistics with our, our uh, work staff, um, we'll make a point. I'll make a point of, of drawing that to their attention. That okay. it wouldn't be uh, any earlier than. 12 noon. We, we definitely need to close it at 12 noon because there's mm. all, all the uh, vendors and what have you have to set up. We have to move the main stage in. We have to do all of that sort of stuff. It's a very short window for us to get ready for 4 o'clock. Thank you. And, and that's acknowledged. I think it was just folks that were counting on having a half a business day. Yep. So I'm glad you're, you've addressed it. So thank you very much. Anything further to the motion? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that is carried as amended. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Durley. The Committee of the Whole received the March 2016 Recreation, Culture and Wellness Department report for information. Questions, comments? Councillor Junkin. Yes. Um <coughs> this is probably a little on the early side, but uh, and I realize that right now the uh, transportation system is being ran on the uh, provincial dime, but uh, maybe we should, uh, I was wondering, I'll, I'll throw this out to my colleagues, that sometime before this program ends, I wonder if we should do a uh, cost analysis uh, and see just how many riders would be needed on this uh, on this system to actually, and I realize that no transportation system breaks even, but it would be nice to have that figure, how many riders we would have to attain to come close to that, I thought. I wonder if we could uh, um, think of doing that. Obviously, it doesn't have to be done right away. I think this is going to run another uh, at least six months, but sometime we should see just how many riders it would take to get to even, break even. Okay, thank you. Um, I think it's it's scheduled to go until the end of March 2017, so another year. Yes. Um, and but I think there is we are expecting a comprehensive report six months before that that ends. But it's a good point, and Mr. CAO, perhaps uh, staff can include that in the next. Is, would it be okay next yeah. month to yeah. just kind of say where are we at? Uh, it's one thing you're quite right, Councillor, to to say these are the numbers. It's another thing to say. How does it kind of fit in yeah. to what we were expecting or hoping for? Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to that? Councillor Papp? You're, you're absolutely correct, Councillor Junkin. And then they could also use the expertise of the transportation staff at the region would help in, in doing that kind of analysis. Mm -hmm. So that when we get ready, you're correct. If we're going to continue it on, on our dime, yes. we got to be prepared yeah. for that. Exactly. Great, mm -hmm. great point. Great mm -hmm. point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Kersey? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll take an opposite tack to some of that. I, I agree with my, my colleague that we need to know that number. But I'd like to throw something out there. Just We don't have to deal with it today, but just to think about. Maybe we need to think about our public transportation system as part of our economic development and feel like a small town concept. And, and where I'm coming from on this is I saw a very interesting example of using public transportation to promote the economy of, of a town. And that was in Melbourne, Australia. Right. Where as long as you stayed within the, um, they call it central business district, all public transportation is free. And it's, it's financed to a large extent by contributions from the businesses that benefit by having this. And we've instituted an advertising campaign. And I think we should think about that, that as long as they stay within the boundary of Pelham, and so we want seniors to drive and we want seniors to come downtown and enjoy the restaurants and maybe go to the, to the, to the uh, stores to shop, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe providing it free would encourage them to do it. So we get the ridership up and, it, and as a secondary benefit or in fact the primary benefit of having that transportation availability is A, people get to know the community better and B, have much better access to the businesses that we're trying to promote and, and make sustainable. So I put it out there just to get the 
the, the thought juices mm -hmm. uh, going. Uh, I've been thinking about bringing something forward to council and or to committee in terms of a motion so we can get some concrete discussion. But, you know, I, I'm just throwing it out there since it got to the table. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. And it, and it lends itself to the question of, of what, what problem are we trying to solve by having a transit system? So is it economic development? Is it access? Is it um, improving the environment? Is it, you know, th those kind of things? And it, and it helps answer those, those questions. So we may want to consider uh, using the process uh, to, to kind of work through that and help solve that, that question so both pieces can be, yeah. can be dealt with. Councillor Papp, I see your I, I, I couldn't agree more turning. because it, the other, yeah, how might we session to continue on the transit in whatever format it is would be essential because it also has an impact on a stated fact that we want to be a walkable community right. without getting to a huge debate. No more par like parking requirements when we're asking people to not use their cars. I mean, <coughs> it has land use implications, it has all this stuff, mm -hmm. and that's the whole idea is to... Re to uh, contain the congestion, mm -hmm. so I'd look forward to that. Uh, that maybe okay. sooner than yeah. later, because yeah. we we only got about a year, right, Councilor yeah. Chuck? And then we got to file our report, and then we stand around and go, "What do we do now?" Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, to consider it for the 2017 yeah, budget, absolutely, yeah, which, which that is does start right. in about six months. So uh, it's a good 100%. point, Councilor Durley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to that question, we did when we met with the uh, uh, with the. Uh, executive assistant at the AMO conference mm -hmm. dropped that line to say after this what happens and and they said that they would be having a look at it so maybe something will become available so we'll enter that into the mix as well okay that's good, good point. very good, good point, sir. and, and um, both the federal and provincial governments are talking in their budgets about transit mm -hmm. and so there may be other opportunities to, to turn this pilot into into a little bit more than that so it's a very good discussion I appreciate Certainly, councillors raising it, uh, all the elements of it. So perhaps we can take that as a takeaway, Madam Clerk, and add that to the list of things that we must uh, do as a result of this meeting, and, and we'll organize a, a session to talk about that and bring that information. Anyone else to that? Uh, anyone else? I, I actually have a small little thing, and I don't know how to raise this. I should have asked earlier from staff. I had the um, somebody from part of the, the downtown in the western part in Fenwick saying, wouldn't it be great to get a bench in front of the Royal Bank? So how do how do how does somebody get that kind of request in, Mr. CAO, if they to, the, the bus picks people up but they're waiting for the bus and they want a bench? Uh, the best option would be to just to put a PSR in and we can deal with it through our regular system, right. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Right. Great. I'll right. mention that to them and we'll get right. that activated. Thank you. But it's it's I think there's you know is there is the there the right transit infrastructure there? There is another situation. So is it there as well? So it's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything further to the recreation, <coughs> culture, and wellness report, Councillor Kersey? Very brief, uh, Mr. Mayor. I I saw the utilization of our f current facilities uh, had dropped specifically with the old Pelham Town Hall, and I wondered uh, yeah. perhaps um, we could have a comment on how we're going about promoting this facility and what our go-forward strategy is to promote our current facilities and presumably uh, future facilities, or if that's something that could be brought at a, at a later uh, a date, I'd be content with that as well. Thank you. Mr. CEO? That's something certain that we can prepare and bring back to Council, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. We'll do that. Thank you. Anything further? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Actually, it's a good point, Councillor. It, it, it's just comparing to your earlier discussion about numbers. It just compares one month to the other. But how do you, what's the annual uptake look like? What's the, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's kind of a snapshot here and a snapshot there. What's the more holistic picture? Mm -hmm. So that would be helpful as well. Uh, it's been moved by Councillor Papp, Committee of the Whole, receive the March 2016 Clerk's Department Report for information. Comments, questions? Councillor Ribiak. Mr. Mayor, um, 
thought occurred when we had a discussion earlier this evening with regard to uh, what's uh, allowable to be put into the public domain around building permits, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And yet we have, of course, a whole process around um, uh, the Committee of Adjustment, changes, consent applications, that sort of thing. So presumably there is uh, information that needs to go out uh, into the public with regard to those activities and necessarily, I guess, addresses and perhaps even even names. Um, so I'm wondering what, what actually hits the, the website with regard to Committee of Adjustment activities and applications and that sort of thing. Perhaps the clerk can answer. Madam Clerk. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, if I could just clarify the question, is it with re relating to personal information or application processes? Thank you. Um, I guess the application process contains within it a great deal of, of information. And you know, I, I, I'm trusting that, of course, that, that whatever we're doing is well within privacy regulations. But there is information that obviously needs to go out into the public realm, some of it probably through the website. Just curious to know um, how that squares with the, the discussion we had earlier around uh, addresses, names uh, okay. related to building answer. permits. Thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have quite a uh, quite an interactive um, section on our website that relates definitely and specifically to the Committee of Adjustment. We advertise when the meetings are. We post uh, agenda packages and minutes on that uh, section of the website as well. The Planning Act is a little bit different, and there is uh, IPC. Um, there are IPC decisions and orders based on IPC uh, being the Information and Privacy Commissioner's Office information with regard to Planning Act applications. It's a little bit different. Um, we still take steps to redact personal information when we can before it's posted, but uh, the provisions are a little bit different. But we always do our best to respect everyone's privacy in that respect as well. Okay. Thank you. Councilor. Thank you. So, so there's specific regulation with regard to that, and that makes what we do okay. And you go further and redact uh, personal information as well. So thank you. I, I appreciate that answer. Okay. Thank you. Anything further on the clerk's report? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It has been moved by Councilor Kersey, the committee will receive the March 2016 Chief Administrative Officer's Report for information. Councillor Papp. Just excited to see that Wellspring is putting forward. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward. I think all of us are looking forward to that. See what the site plan would look like. That, uh, that's going to be quite a jewel. Thank you. So I imagine you'll be back in the next 30 days or so. I would say. Mr. CEO. Uh, I can't commit to a time, but I'm. Uh, uh, sure, yeah, but there will be information coming Perfect. back to Council. Perfect. Thank Great you. to see. Great to hear. <clears throat> it is very good to hear. Others? Councillor Ribiak? Thank you. With regard to the public art project, uh, this is um, an item that received some mm -hmm. uh, some press not very long ago and had to do with the fact of, of its budget and the size of its budget and the extent to which um, the community has an, a, a part to play in it. Um, this is a very short report here. It, it says everything that we need to know, I think, but I wonder whether you can go into greater detail and, and particularly whether there's a communication process envisioned for ensuring that, that, that this is kept current in the minds of, of individuals, of people, residents. Mr. CAO, can you assist the councillor? Uh, yes, there will be an extensive community engagement and community consultation in the process. We're in the procurement stage right now, so everything is a matter, everything has been kept confidential. Uh, to protect the integrity of the procurement um, uh, process that we've undertaken. Um, once the, well, we have shortlisted, as I've indicated, and there will be proposals and mock-ups coming from uh, those individuals, and there will be a process for community engagement and evaluation to help the committee in uh, selecting the final recipients. So uh, there's lots to do, um, but there isn't a lot of information forthcoming at this point because of the sensitivity around maintaining the integrity of, of who the committee is selecting and how that process works. Thank you. Councillor? Thank you. And I and, and understand that. And, and, and as I said, I think there's, there's more than enough information here for our purposes. Um, do, we, do we keep um, uh, the website current with respect to where we are on this project? For example, just the information that you gave now, that things are 
working through the procurement stage right now, which of necessity needs to be confidential and, and things are coming up. Even that kind of statement uh, might be useful in, in something like this. Do we have information on our website? Do we, do we keep the current on that? Lucio? No, there's nothing currently on the website about that, but there will be once, the, once we have something to put on there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the CEO's report? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Good. I just died. It's been moved by <laughs> Councillor Junkin that the regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be adjourned until the next regular committee scheduled for Monday, April 18th, unless sooner called by the Mayor. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Very quick question. Yeah. They want to raise it there.